Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, as we talked about not too long ago, a new version of Firefox was coming out. This is called Proton, and this did come out officially with the Firefox 89 release, which is now out. So I jumped on over to Arch to have a look at it because, of course, Arch pushes stuff out super quick. I wanted to comment on a few things in the OMG Ubuntu article before we actually get into what this looks like. So having a brief look at the article here, basically it goes through and new colors, tabs, all these fun things. I didn't notice a lot of new colors, but okay, maybe they're there and I just didn't notice it. They say though, it makes it easier to use as redundant or less frequently used features have been pruned from the UI. Translation, we're gonna make this user friendly so that the people who actually took the time to learn how to use the software can no longer use it. And all the rest of the people out there who didn't take the time to learn how to software uh, won't be confused by not learning how to use the software. So yeah, that's kind of my thought. Um, in my opinion, this is a little bit kind of crazy there. So. Will eventually like the, like the UI, of course not. Yeah, most of the time, sometimes we like to resist change. I agree with that. And uh, we're gonna look at this. So Proton's floating tabs that most people dislike. Those are still in here. But, you know, uh, whatever. Uh, other things there, they didn't really didn't have anything to say about this in the article. I just wanted to point out that one thing there real quick. So let's go ahead and actually have a look at this. So here is my Endeavor OS. This is built up in a virtual machine today. And I went ahead and just installed Firefox. Now I played around with it briefly so I could grab a couple ideas about it. And then I killed the whole, um, the whole user profile. So it should start up fresh as if it's the very first time starting up. So I want to comment on some things there. So let's go ahead and boot it up. And this is what we get right out of the box. And one thing I noticed right out of the box is we did not actually get a notification like we have been getting lately about DNS over HTTPS. Because I believe that that automatically turns itself on without you having anything to say about it. And I, to this I say, F you Firefox. This is bad. It's dangerous. It should not be used. Period. You should not use this function unless you absolutely need it. So now we will not have the choice. We will not have the brief pop-up that says disabled. It just automatically enables it for you. Now, can you go into your network and have a canary domain that in theory blocks this? Yes, but you should not do this. You should not have it turned on. Firefox should not even have this as an option. We've talked about the security of it. Even the government CIA is saying this is a concern. There's too many problems with DNS over HTTPS. I have an entire video about that that I will link in the cards here on YouTube. And if I think of it, I'll put them in the description down below as well. So with that, screw you Firefox. You're just becoming worse and worse. I don't care about the UI changes as much. So let's go ahead and talk about the UI changes now. So here, uh, let's just go ahead and back up. So here is, we have a new page here. It is uh, the new Firefox welcome. Fire starts here and apparently, yeah, they're burning the whole place down with their nonsense. So make it your default browser or not now. Uh, here is a sign in for the Facebook page. So you can go ahead and get your prompt to sign in. Another thing I would recommend not to do. And then everything else here. Basically what we see is that there's not actually a, um, a start page on that one. Let's see, is that the same thing that starts? All right, so once you've opened it the very first time, this is what it's gonna look like more often than not. Here we have things recommended by Pocket. So a bunch of news articles that based on its own AI, it thinks you might want to read. So that's a little controversial, although in theory, everything is offline, not sent back to Firefox, but we'll see. These are uh, pinned items or they give us, you know, some stuff that it thinks you might want to see. And then here we have the search. Default, of course, is Google. We can import bookmarks, get started. So overall on this screen here, it looks very similar other than, of course, the floating tabs up here. And this is what a lot of people didn't like. I don't really care. I think it's, honestly, I think it looks fine. Um, I don't think it's like, oh my God, it's so horrible. I think it's fine. Um, I'm, not, I'm not bothered by that. Now, some of the things that you start to notice in here though is 
down in here, this is where they've changed some things. I commented on my earlier video when we looked at this when it was not yet out, talking about they took out the customize and they have. I guess that's one of the redundant things. Now, people commented in the comments there, you can right click and customize the toolbar here. I've actually never done that. But now if you are used to customizing your Firefox, that is the only option you will have. So now this is pretty much the same it has as it has been. They give us these stupid spacers. I have no idea why. You can go ahead and add your search bar. I did notice that the search bar initially was a little bit bigger, but maybe that's because I took out a lot of things. Like pocket, complete nonsense to me. Uh, downloads, that's fine. Face, uh, excuse me, uh, Firefox login, useless garbage. Let's get rid of that. I liked always having the private window up there. That's a feature I use a lot. Um, maybe add-ons. I don't use them a whole lot. And let's see, there's a screenshot tool that might be useful or not, depending. So you can go ahead and still go ahead and make all of those changes as you could before. So they've just taken it out of the, uh, out of the, the main menu here where it used to be at. We can still access pretty much everything else. In fact, I don't really think anything else has been removed from it other than the customization, but there you have that. But let's go ahead and jump back into the settings now. We're not gonna jive all the way down, just have a look here. Most of what we see in here is going to be pretty much the same. You can do your spell checking. Uh, again, this might send some data out. You can save your downloads. Here is DRM, you can enable it or disable it. Here's your Firefox updates. Of course, this is gonna be managed by, um, by Arch, not by Firefox. Use recommended performance settings, so you can turn those on, turn those off. And then here's a variety of other different things. Enable picture in picture video, con oh, I hate those things. Turn those off, <laughs> let's go ahead and do that. And then of course, your network settings. Oh, did I not? push OK or did it turn itself back on? All right, we're gonna close this down and see if this thing keeps on turning itself back on. Firefox is completely getting purged from my systems. <laughs> I think I just failed to push the OK button when I did that before. Let's, come on. All right, there we are. So um, you can go ahead and uh, turn that off. Here's your home. You can d set what is there or not. Most of this stuff is not the same. Look at this, sponsored stuff. Oh yes, we're gonna pay to show people what they want. Shortcuts, there's web search, and then snippets or tips from news. Uh, Firefox and news, here you can add the search bar and the toolbar, or you can leave it off. Here's your default. We have Amazon, Google, Bing, DuckDuckGo, eBay. So again, you can change your search suggestions as well. So you can um, indicate what goes in there. We'll play around with that in a bit. Most of the other things in here are gonna be fairly standard. Here's your search again. Let's go back to this. Again, if you wanna remove something from this, like Bing, <laughs> um, Google, I don't prefer that one, but you can go ahead and set whatever your default is. Let's set my default to DuckDuckGo. Here is our Google, and here is your privacy and security. I like to use the custom, and then choose which trackers, scripts to block. Note that this is block, not disable. So it's gonna block cookies, cross-site. You can set what layer it's going to be. You can set all cookies, all third parties. You can block cross-site trackers. So this is really good that it has They've added a little bit more variety here, or maybe I haven't looked at them for a while, but at least you can do that. You can block crypto miners, you can block fingerprinters. So there we have it. So now we actually have a good system set up. Everything else in here looks to be the same as I remember it, so I don't think that anything there. Um, here's HTTPS only mode. You can set it uh, in all windows and private windows only or don't enable it. So the default is don't enable it. So depending on where you wanna set that, you can do that. Of course, here's your sync. You'd have to sign in to use that. So I'm not sure how themes and supports are gonna work over here. Let's just go ahead and search for themes. Let's see if, uh, if we add any themes, if that does anything goofy with this. Let's go ahead and install just a few random themes. Sure, we're gonna add that one. So it looks like your themes are gonna be fairly um, uh, fairly compatible with the old settings. 
So overall, I guess a lot of people, uh, based on what was in the Discord, people would say I'd be looking at something else to yell at. No, honestly, no, I don't care. The UI changes, they're not significant enough for me to, to, to see a huge difference. It pretty much looks about the same as it did other than floating tabs at the top. I personally, I think the floating tabs look fine. I, I don't care. I don't think it's horrible. The worst thing about this is they're enabling DNS over HTTPS without giving you the pop-up in the at least brief five seconds to disable it right out of the box. So there we have it. Firefox has a new version. If it's not in your distro yet, it probably will be in your distro in the next couple days. Uh, I'm doing this again on Arch because Arch will get those updates as soon as they're released. So this isn't any weird trickery, is, isn't anything else. This is from Arch downloading it from the repository. Overall, the system, it looks the same. It's Firefox. It's behaving as Firefox always has. It just looks different with the tabs. I don't care. I think it looks just fine. I'm not mad at it. I'm not going to have anything to comment on that. The only part I'm really mad about is that DNS over HTTPS. This is a feature that should not even be here at all, uh, let alone enabled by default without giving you the option to turn it off. And most people will not realize. And, and let me just go ahead and briefly summarize the, the fundamental problems with this. I have a whole video on it, so we're just going to be really brief about this. First, this is sending a lot of data to Cloudflare by default, which Cloudflare itself is not, they're gaining too much dominance. They're beginning like market share in maintaining a large swaths of the internet. And I think that that's always dangerous. Now you can go ahead and here and create your own custom DNS over HTTPS. If you have the capabilities in your network to do that, that is one of the use cases where this could make sense. Now, the reason this was pulled in as a big security risk by government and by people like me is because this bypasses, I have a very advanced custom blocking script on my own network, which blocks crypto miners, it blocks session replay, it blocks advertising networks, it blocks nasty websites, things like that. So if this is actually enabled, this is going to bypass every bit of that security that I have on my network. So if I go ahead and turn this guy on and I go to facebook.com, then Facebook is enabled. This means that now Every website which has a Facebook share button, a Facebook like button, everything with Facebook code, everything with Facebook trackers can now continuously follow me around the internet. Now, if I go in here and I go back down into my settings and I disable DNS over HTTPS, disable this stuff, and I might have to restart the um, browser. I may not. So let's just go ahead and close tabs. Let's go ahead and restart it. If I go here, now Facebook is going to be blocked on my whole network. It's going to give us a, a, it should hopefully give us a 404. I'm not sure why it's still looking for it. But what it's going to do is it should foul out on us. And this means that everything Facebook is blocked on everything on my system. Now, what some systems like cell phones and stuff might do is it might hunt around for a network that allows facebook.com to go. That's what it almost looks like it's trying to do now. It should have timed out already. Um, what's going on here? Continue HTTP site, problem loading page. So you can see here that it is actually uh, timing out. It can't reach it. This means that Facebook trackers, ad, block, or ad blockers, all this type of stuff, will not be accessible on my network. So if a person has an advanced network without specifically setting up the Firefox Canary domains, then this browser installed will get around all of that. And while you think you might be protected, it's going to prevent you from being protected. It's gonna give you access to the trackers. It's gonna give the internet access to things that you have explicitly blocked on your network. This is why Firefox should not even have this as an option inside of their browser. Or at the very least, it should always be an opt-in for the people who know how to use it because it produces security risks. That is what the government's big issue with it was. So there we have it, guys. Um, for me, I don't care how it looks, the UI changes, ooh, whatever, but Firefox is becoming worse because of forcing this DNS over HTTPS by default. That is the fundamental issue. So there it is. There's my brief thoughts, having a look at it here for a little bit this afternoon. 
Overall, it behaves the same. It looks almost the same. They've added a few more bubbliness. I, I don't really care. So that's kind of my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts on all this in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.